we head to the rematch that the world will be watching. The rematch, I don't know about the century, but definitely of the decade. Nate Diaz coming in with a record of 19-10 and 10 against the notorious one, Conor McGregor, with a record of 19-3. and 3. And you mentioned the press conference they had earlier today, or excuse me, the weigh-in they had earlier today. And I did see that weigh-in, actually. I, I used your UFC fight thing to say, I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, it, it was funny because the whole weigh-in was very rapid-paced. Everybody came in, they weighed in, they posed, they moved. Then we get to McGregor Diaz. And, of course, did you see, for the first, for the first time I can remember... You had armed police officers standing there with Dana White behind these two guys. And, of course, they showed you definitely needed more security guards. They started getting into it, not as much as John Jones and Daniel Cormier last year, but you could tell these guys are ready for this fight. And it's been a long road getting to this fight. And you had told me to watch the Bad Blood special that UFC did of these two. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I did watch some of it earlier today. I just didn't have a chance to watch all of it. And I want you to give the rundown on how we got here. And I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's safe to say this whole thing started a little less than a year ago on September 14th of 2015, at the UFC Go Big press conference. And I'll let you take it from there. Yeah, and before I get into that one real quick, just have to I have to say this. At the weigh-ins, <laughs> they, had, they always interview both fighters really quick. Joe Rogan asks them a question, they answer mm-hmm. the question, and then they get off the stage. This was one of, I, I'm not going to say one of, this was the best two answers I've ever seen. It got me so pumped for this fight. I couldn't even, I, I mean, it's not like I needed to be more pumped for this fight. But pretty much mm-hmm. to abridge what was said, Connor was asked, uh, asked about the fight. I don't even know what the question was, but I know what the answer was. The answer was pretty much, you should have killed me the first time. I'm now going to come. Oh I'm yeah. I'm going to kill, kill you and and your whole crew, and your bitch tits too. <laughs> and Connor <laughs> then proceeds to uh-huh. run off the stage. They then interview Nate, and Nate then goes, "Oh, I already killed you the first time." So now it's kill or be killed again, America, motherfucker, and then walks off the stage. <laughs> I couldn't tell you how happy <laughs> those two comments made me. I mean, it's the, it's the epitome of what these two fighters are. and it, it's, it's a trash talker that loves to get in somebody's head in Conor McGregor, and he has not been able to do it in this fight. Fighting a guy that just doesn't care. He's just so real. Mm-hmm. He's a guy I have a feeling, if you went up to any of these UFC fighters and basically shit talked them, most of these UFC fighters would be like, I can't fight a fan, I'm going to get fined. If you said this to the Diaz brothers, I'm pretty sure Fitz would come in at your face before you even know what's happening. They don't care. They're real. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is them. And like you said, this all happens. Um, at the Go Big press conference, which was leading into the fight with Conor McGregor and Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo was Mm -hmm. basically the undisputed king at the time, and Conor was trash-talking not just him, basically trash-talking Cowboy Cerrone that was fighting for the belt at the time against Rafael de Sanos. He was trash talking both of them, telling both of them that he was going to kill them after he took the head off of Aldo, that he was going to absolutely destroy anybody, was mocking 
um, Chad Mendez that he just beat just months before that press conference was absolutely on a tear. It basically played on YouTube and uh, Facebook and all over the place for weeks of mm-hmm. clips of him trash talking and basically with all these sorts of pre-made but brilliant type of lines. And it really, really got under Nate Diaz's skin. Uh, Nate Diaz believed that this is a guy who's getting too much hype. He's he's taking money out of the pocket of Nate, that Nate, Nate deserved these big fights, not him. And Nate Diaz basically took all that motivation to train for Michael Johnson, which was his fight in December, put on a clinic in that fight, looks probably the best I've ever seen him, and then proceeds to get on the mic and call out the not just not just Connor, ignore the fact that there was the title fight immediately after him in his weight class, call out Connor, basically say you took everything everything that I uh, fought for and I want to fight you and uh, this is going down. And basically, after that fight, didn't get the fight. Uh, Rafael de Sarnas got the fight. And Rafael de Sarnas then got injured. And they were between Diaz and Cowboy Cerrone. They basically offered the fight to Diaz. Diaz said he wanted more money. Then they offered it to Cowboy, almost had it together. And then Dana was basically like, look, I I just want to offer more money to Diaz. I think it's going to be the bigger fight. Goes back, able to get the fight done with Diaz. And Diaz walks in basically off a of vacation drinking tequila, which is his quote, not mine, mm-hmm. and comes in and shocks the world, beats Conor McGregor, and now we're in a whirlwind where people actually know uh, Nate Diaz's name, which used to be the guy that was Nick Diaz's brother. Uh, Nick Diaz is always the more famous fighter of the two, and now it's switched dramatically where now Nate is in the limelight. He's going on Conan and he's going on uh, Jimmy Kimmel and all sorts of different interviews, and it's a very interesting type of thing because Nate's not Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor can go on all, all these shows and be very respectful, but then kind of trash talk a little bit. He kind of adapts himself. He's very good with the media. Nate's not good with the media. We all knew this. <laughs> Nate's not a good media guy. He goes to these media things. He's like, yeah, man, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to beat him up. He doesn't really give give really articulate type of answers. Uh, he he always is wearing the same thing. He's not coming in suits like Conor McGregor. And I think that kind of got under Conor's skin a little bit. And now Conor's like, this guy mm-hmm. made his name off of me, and I need to take it back. And that's why we're seeing this fight happen uh, right away, not only – is it happening right away? It should happen at lightweight, which is the more agreeable weight for the two fighters. But they're fighting at welterweight pretty much because Connor said that's where it fought the first time and he wants to fight at the same weight, same everything, wants to basically replicate almost everything that he can to not have an excuse from Diaz when he beats him. So it's, you know, it's a very interesting fight. I, I, Super excited about it. I I don't think if you asked me six months ago when the first fight basically happened, I would have said that I really was excited to see a rematch right away. But after everything, after uh, UFC 200 blew up, uh, that was the original date for these two to fight. Uh, And then the tweet around the world happened where Conor McGregor actually retired um, had a big blow up with the UFC. Then he basically made up with the UFC. They tried to put the fight back together. They went to Diaz to finalize the deal, and he said, "Oh no, 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 no! You're going to offer me now more money because I know he just got paid. So now, what do you got for me?" 
And then it went to, oh, man, now we have to convince Nate. And they've never had this problem with a person that wanted to fight Connor before. Uh, they they always have guys that are like, I want to fight Connor. I don't care how much. And they basically then fight Connor. I wouldn't say for peanuts. They make good money, but they don't make anywhere near what uh, Connor makes. This is the first guy that's basically like, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna make my money now. Then go beat this guy, and then you're gonna give me the Connor McGregor money. I'm gonna take his spot. And I think with a win, Nate Diaz could legitimately be one of the bigger names in the sport, a guy that everybody's going to want to see fight and could maybe catapult himself to a title shot um, in pretty much any division he wants. Uh, if he wants if he wants mm-hmm. to find Woody in the welterweight division, I wouldn't see them telling him no. Same thing with him fighting for the lightweight belt against Alvarez, or shake it up a little bit. We just talked about GSP. A fight with GSP would be also a very interesting fight. I don't know what's next for Nate, but with a win, people are all saying, well, what happens to Conor McGregor? I'm saying, what happens to Nate Diaz? How much bigger does Nate Diaz Mm -hmm. become than he is now? It's a very interesting thing. Yeah. I think this is this makes this fight very interesting. Yep. And uh, I want to throw a couple things out there. Um, I actually went back and I watched that UFC Go Big press conference. And I saw the part on Bad Blood where you really got why Nate Diaz got pissed off by that press conference. And you know, I you know, like I said on the show before, I'm more of a casual novice type UFC watcher. So, you know, you hear Conor McGregor, you want you want to root for him because he's the guy who's known and he's the guy who's had all these big fights and everything. But in watching that go big press conference and then hearing Nate Diaz say, I'm watching this guy basically shit on everything I work for, you know, I feel like I had been that guy, I gave 10 years of my life to this, and then me watching the Go Big Press Conference, I was rooting for Nate Diaz, because, you know, you mentioned last week, when we talked about the, the, the WWE comments that Conor McGregor had made, that he could be a great heel. I'm watching him at that press conference, and I saw a heel. I saw a guy who was basically spitting in the face of every fighter on that stage. And for Nate Diaz to respond the way he did, you know something? I got to be honest, I was kind of in his corner after seeing that. And um, the next thing I want to mention, you you had said the GSP thing. Well, I mean, you had also said a few months ago that Nate Diaz was asked about a GSP fight, and he basically said that was his brother's fight. Because you had said that, I guess, him and GSP have the rivalry, what, they had already fought like twice, and Nick had lost to him those two times? They fought once, yeah. They fought once, and uh, oh, okay. Nick lost, and then Nick basically you guys came out recently and basically said that he was drugged and all sorts of stuff. It's, it's, it's a crazy, crazy story. I'm not going to get into that whole... <laughs> you know, like I said, the Diaz brothers, the Diaz brothers are unfiltered. You can't unscripted stories that I mean, you could not, you couldn't make the stuff up. Some of the stuff that they say, some of the stuff that they be, like fully believe. And yeah, I did say that. I did say that uh, uh, Nate was very adamant that that was his brother's fight. But at the end of the day. Who says that they, they don't offer a ton of money to Nate and Nick's like, you better take this fight? I mean, you know, you got to remember, mm. the other day, it's not like they're asking them to fight fight Nick, you know. Um, mm. they're, they're asking them to fight a guy that Nick maybe wants to fight, but at the other day, I think Nick has his own options. I think Nick has a lot of interesting fights that he could take as well, so 
you know, it's, it, it's an interesting one. It's one I threw out not saying that that's definitely going to be what's next for him with a win. But I can tell you for a fact, any, anybody that is basically calling GSP out, GSP is basically saying he wants fighters that are big name, big draw fighters. And I don't know if you get a bigger draw is, other than the guy that beat Conor McGregor twice, if that's how this goes down on Saturday. <laughs> so it may be GSP mm-hmm. uh, using his power to get Nate than the other way around. So, you know, we'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll see what happens and everything like that. But it's, it's I think the most interesting storyline isn't what happens if Conor McGregor loses, which I think the answer to that is he goes – to back the featherweight and well, and well, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, Dave, we're going to get into that in a little bit because I want to continue to build up to this fight. And you laid a great picture out of how we got to this week, but over the last few weeks, the drawing between these two continued. And you know, there was a press conference a couple of weeks ago where McGregor said he was going to take Nate Diaz's head off. And that brings us to the press conference these two had on Wednesday. And I have the audio clip that I'm going to play here, and I'm going to narrate this a little bit, because obviously we don't have the picture, so it's not going to have the same impact. To set the stage here, Nate Diaz is at the press conference. Conor McGregor is a half hour late getting to this press conference. He gets there. He answers his questions, me answers his questions, and then we get to this. After this fight, but make no mistake, it will be a trilogy fight down the line. It won't be straight away, but we will we will do it three times, 100%. Now, at this point, Nate Diaz walks off the stage. Your whole team. He wa- Little crackhead ass ass. You'll do nothing. You'll do nothing. So he walks up the aisle, he walks across the aisle. They're drawn, they're going back and forth. They see it, they give him the finger, they give him the finger. <laughs> Shut your fucking mouth, you'll do nothing. You'll do fucking nothing. Not one of you will do nothing. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Fuck you. Here goes the first water bottle. Connor starts throwing water bottles. That's all right. Hey, hey, hey. The Connor. Two. Don't throw those fucking. Yeah, Connor. Connor. There it goes. That's a wrap. Get him out of here. Well said by Dana White, who I, I, I told I said this last night, I gotta say it again. When Dana White says the God, don't you don't you throw those he sounds like a father trying to break up his two kids. So that set the stage for the way in Dave, what what was your thought when that press conference was going down like that? I thought that was another couple million added to the pay per view. <laughs> um it, it is, it's a very interesting fight um, when it comes down to it, just on paper. But when you put when you put the animosity between these two fighters together, they didn't really have a press conference until this press conference. The last one they had was at UFC 200. I was there in person. It was a shit show. You couldn't even hear what was going on. Um, I know when you watch the video, you kind of, like, don't get what's going on. But, like, the reverb of of the actual microphones made it almost impossible to, like, hear much of the, uh, much of the actual press conference. And uh, Nate didn't really give many answers. Connor wasn't able to really insult them. And they were both late. 
for, I think they were about 30 minutes late. Uh, they started the thing like 45 minutes after they were supposed to originally have it happen. And it was, it was like a complete failed press conference. So this was the first press conference they really had for this fight. And when they, when they basically started to have it, Connor wasn't there. He didn't show up. And then all of a sudden he walked in, acted like he it was his show, started answering questions, and they said, mm-hmm. you know, if he gets to if he gets to come late, I'm gonna leave early. And uh, he got off the stage once, then came back, kind of like he was talking to uh, his brother Nick. And then way before that, Nick says, um, "Hey, bro, let's go." And at that point that's when Nate started to get up during that question. You, you kind of see that a little better in the embedded series that they actually uh, do leading up to the fight, which they do a chronicle of usually the top two fights, sometimes the top three fights, and they follow all the fighters around during fight week, and then they post what happens the next day um, on the YouTube in about a seven-minute uh, put together a clip with all the fighters kind of talking about a little bit of what they're doing leading up to fight week and showing a little bit of a in-depth look at all the stuff leading up to the fight to kind of sell the fight. And when they had this for the press conference, I actually watched this today, uh, I think today or yesterday, maybe yesterday. Um, my whole mind changed on this. It, it it showed Conor McGregor being talked to by Dana and him saying, well, let's just continue the press conference. And Dana saying, no, it's done. We're not doing it. And he said, just get him back. Stand him up here. Let's face off. Let's get this. Let's continue this. And Dana continued to say, no, no, this is, this is over. We're not doing it. And Conor then proceeded to stomp off and almost look like a spoiled brat of a kid, really, really uh, annoyed. And they, then they kind of showed Nate, and he was like, he didn't care. He, then Nate was just kind of like, whatever, man, like, I'm just ready to fight. I think the craziest thing happened this week, and I don't think I ever would have predicted this. I think Nate got in the contest. And Connor has mm. not been able to uh, deploy his whole game plan. And Nate has been, like, I don't even know if this was a game plan of his, but he perfectly has been able to deflect everything that Connor has done. And it has really frustrated Connor. And Connor doesn't really know where to go from here. He knows he doesn't have the mental edge going into this fight, which he always does. And I think that's going to affect him in the fight. So it, this whole press conference thing with them throwing bottles and stuff like that, I think in hindsight we could look look back at it and see a huge turning point of what happened in this fight directly correlated with what happened in that press conference. You know, that's very well said, but what I think is the funniest thing about what happened is going back to that Bad Blood uh, documentary uh, you told me to watch that UFC put out, Nate Diaz said, you know, if it had been me at that Go Big press conference and Connor's talking shit about everybody, man, there would have been water bottles flying across the room. Well, <laughs> Nate Diaz proved he wasn't lying on that one, man. Let me tell you. Um... So, I mean, you know, everybody's talking about what this means for Conor McGregor if he loses this fight. I'm going to put it this way, and uh, we're obviously running a little late here. It's 11.08. I apologize if I'm keeping you late here. We'll try not to go too much later here. But let me ask you something, because I, I think you said it perfectly, that he came off as a spoiled brat. With everything that happened in that con- in the, uh, the Gold Big Press Conference, and all the other press conferences, and he had the whole bravado and everything. Don't you feel like the actual UFC fighters 
are probably pulling for Nate Diaz, at the very least, to put Conor McGregor in his place? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't. I think the UFC really? is pulling for Conor. I mean, let me put it this way. Even the I'm fighters. Talking, I'm, talking, I'm talking about the actual oh, fighters. I, you know what? The fighters the fighters themselves may be pulling for Nate a little bit, but I think it's in their best mm-hmm. interest to root for Conor. And I say that because you don't want Conor to lose all credibility. And I don't think he will in this fight. But when it comes down to it, you don't want a guy to basically lose, lose his luster because – then if it doesn't go to Nate, then where does it go? Does it just go away? And if it goes away, then there goes away the money, and now you don't have any guy you can call out to get that big payday. You want that big payday to be there. If it's with Tyler McGregor, you want that to stay. So this whole thing yeah. with Nate is very interesting because, you know, it's it's taken away the one thing a lot of people liked about Connor, and that was, the fact that he's able to talk trash and back it up. Well, he's not able to talk trash or back it up with Nate, and it's really frustrating, Connor, and it's really changing the minds of some fans, including myself, when it comes to, I don't know where Connor's going to be able to go if he can't really get in the guy's head, and if anybody's smart and looks at this, okay, I want to fight Conor McGregor. If I'm Jose Alba, say that's going to be the next fight, uh, supposedly. If if Jose Alba really mm. wants to get into Conor's head, I'm watching those press conferences over and over and over again. I'm figuring out what Nate's doing and what Nate's, you mm. know, basically don't give him a response. That's, that's, always what, that's always what they tell you in school, right? If the bully If the bully's bully, bullying you, just don't give him a response. That's what he wants. All he wants is a response. If you don't give him a response, he'll get frustrated. And I think that's what we're seeing. So, you know, coming back to your question, do you think, do I think they're rooting for him? No. Do I think they should root for him? Yeah. Because the money will go away if Conor McGregor can't trash talk. Well, I, yeah, you kind of took away a couple of the questions I was going to ask after that because you kind of answered everything in that one. But if he loses this fight to Nate Diaz, don't you think some of the bravado, some of the luster, some of that trash-talking ability does go away? Because as you said, as Connor said in the Go Big uh, press conference, yeah, I talk a lot of shit, but I back it up. Don't you feel that whole aura goes away if he loses to Nate Diaz a second time after everything he has said. And as you said, Nate Diaz is not rattled one bit here. So don't you think a lot of that goes away if he does lose to Nate Diaz a second time? I think it gives a lot more anime to other fighters, but he has built in excuses. I moved up to two weight classes over my weight that I fight at down champion at. Yes, I lost, but I lost to a guy that's much bigger than me, much taller than me, and it was just something I couldn't overcome. But I will overcome. I just still need to figure it out. still need to get myself feel ready for that cost, and that's why I'm coming back down here to fight you, Peon, and fight you and beat you and, and just beat up these little little kids until I'm ready to move up again. I mean, that's all I need to do to really – reinvent himself back into the division when he if he fights at featherweight or even if he goes to lightweight. But the interesting thing that I think is if Connor can't make the weight at featherweight, which is a very big question right now, he's he's bulking up for one seventy to expect him to then go down to one forty five, which he has been struggling at even before this whole uh, two fights with Diaz at 170, it's it's interesting to say that he wouldn't be able to make it and he have to fight at 155. I say that because at 155, there's a guy that fights at 155 named Nate Diaz. And how can you be in a division with a guy that beats you twice 
and say that you're the best because you're not. Mm-hmm. The best beats the play. Yeah. So I think in mm-hmm. in Tana's mind, if he wants to be this unstoppable force, he needs to win this fight because if he then goes back down the lightweight, first of all, nobody's going to want to see a third fight with Nate Diaz, even if it's that lightweight. He's beat him twice. Nobody's going to want to see that fight anymore. And now you're going to have to avoid a guy in the division while trying to take the title to then try to claim that you're the best ever when you can't even beat one of the guys in your division. So mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a single dilemma for Conor McGregor when it comes to the moves that he wants to make and the money he wants to make. So I think it's very, very important for Conor to win. I think it's a winnable fight for Conor. But, I mean, I assume you're going to ask me who's going to win or lose. So it, it, I have some comments when it comes to that. Of I was, I was, what I think. okay, I was building up, I was building up to that. I yeah, I, I, that, I don't want to. I don't easy, want to jump too easy, far into but, it right away. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm building up to that. But I mean, I guess I could ask you who this fight is more important to. But in my opinion, this fight is more important to Conor McGregor than Nate Diaz in terms of what it means for their legacies, at least in my opinion, because. Nate Diaz was an unknown fighter for the most part before this. Even if he loses, he's made his mark here. If Connor loses, I mean, we've already kind of noted, this means a lot to him. So I'm correct in thinking this fight is more important for Connor to win than Nate in many ways, right? Yeah, I mean, that's without that. Connor McGregor needs to win this fight. I don't mm-hmm. think Nate even feel any pressure, which I think is a big upside for Nate because, mm-hmm. it, you know, win or lose, Nate doesn't lose much. I mean, he's already beat Conor once. He's got the confidence. Mm-hmm. He's going in there just saying to himself, I'm coming in in better shape facing the same guy. So, you know, let me just go in and do my thing and I'll win this fight. So, and confidence is a big thing in MMA. Uh, confidence is key. I mean, you saw it with Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor was extremely confident that he was going to be uh, Jose Aldo, even though Jose Aldo was undefeated uh, in the UFC and was a guy that we didn't really see beaten. And uh, then Conor went in and knocked him out in 13 seconds. So, you know, confidence can mm-hmm. take you a long way. And unfortunately, I think, Khan needs to find some way to get himself confident because I don't think he's going to be able to beat Nate without it. Absolutely. Now, the the one thing I want to respond to something you said, and then we'll move to the next question here. You had said connor has got a built-in excuse because he moved up two weight classes to go to welterweight. Well, in my opinion, that might have been an excuse for the first fight, but in this fight, the fact that he had the opportunity to go to a lesser weight class and he still chose to fight at welterweight, I don't look at that as an excuse as if, if he uses it as one because you made your bet. You had the opportunity to take this fight at a lesser class and you wanted to go back to welterweight at this one. So if you're using that as an excuse, it's just that is an, it's an excuse. They are like assholes. Everybody has one. And I can't take that seriously. If he uses that as an excuse, if he loses this fight. But anyway, the last question I'll ask before the big one. We know, win or lose, Connor's next fight probably is with Jose Aldo for that uh, lightweight, uh, the featherweight championship. Just because Dana White has said that, it makes sense. It's almost been a year since Connor won that belt and he still hasn't defended it at featherweight. So you would figure that is the logical next fight for him. Where does Diaz go from here, win or lose? He goes to the lightweight division. I, I, I mean, I don't know who he fights, but there's a lot of very interesting fights. I mean, you know, 
this is another interesting one. It, it happened already, but I think a lot of people would like to see it. You got a guy in the division, like, he's a, another guy that's fighting well today right now at the lightweight in uh, Cowboy Cerrone. So the Cowboy Cerrone impresses and wins, goes back down the lightweight division. Nate loses. That's a good fight to put together. Um, it happened before Nate won, and I think it's a fight that Cowboy would love to get back. Cowboy would be on a winning streak. Nate, it, Nate would be coming off a loss, and I think it would be a great fight for those two to kind of, you know, bridge the gap back into the lightweight division and make a a really big name star through that name because a lot of people know Cowboy because they watch this fight. And, oh, I remember that guy type of thing. So that could be a good booking. But at the end of the day, I think Nate has already cemented himself as a guy to watch, a winner loose. And I think the next time we see Nate, it could could most likely be a main event no matter who he's fighting. Um, if it's a champion or not, mm-hmm. and I think it's going to be type of, it could even be a pay per view type of fight. So I mean, if he's not fighting for a title, uh, you know, I don't see him anywhere less of a co main event on a pay per view. He could be a really big name and bring up some other big name stars behind him just by having them fight Nate. So I think. He, I think he just basically, he has so many ways to go, and it just depends on the way the UFC wants to book him and what they think they can get out of him. Mm. All right. So we built it up. Conor McGregor, Nate Diaz. Who wins, Dave? Well, I think Nate Diaz wins. Um, I I yeah. don't want to say that. I I. I'm rooting for Connor. I'm going to just caveat that right here. I am rooting for Connor. I want Connor to win. I love Nate, and I'm rooting for Nate, too. I like Nate. I I hope everything goes well for him. But for the, I just think it's better for the UFC if Connor wins. I like the fact of where they can go with Connor. Um, you know, but all that aside, and Nate Diaz has played this perfectly, and he has gotten in Conor's head. I don't see Conor having the edge going into this fight. We've talked about it. I, I I think that he was broken at that press conference, and he showed he showed cracks in his armor. And Nate Diaz is going to rip your armor apart if you have all of it. And I just don't I don't see. Conor McGregor being able to uh, beat Nate when it, uh, emotionally. Um, if he comes in with emotion, he comes in really wanting. I mean, I think he came in emotionally the first time. I think we really kind of saw that first fight that he thought he was going to be able to knock him out real easy and he was an easy fight. Now he's coming in actually not liking Nate. And I think that's a different type of emotion that's going to affect him even more. And it's one of those it's one of those things where confidence can really hurt you sometimes, as we saw in the first fight. But now in this fight, not being confident can probably even hurt you more. So I think mm. Nate comes in not and with the not care in the world, knowing that he's the better man, and and going in and fighting his fight. And if he fights the like he fought. In the uh, Michael Johnson fight, he fought lightweight. I don't see Conor McGregor winning this fight. And it's an unfortunate thing to say, but right now, I I I can call it this way. If there's a finish, if it's, if it's a quick fight, then I could say Conor's probably going to win this fight. But if Conor can't finish this quick, it's going to be a... T- tough fight for Conor. And it's not like I can't see Conor winning the decision, but to fight Nate Diaz for five rounds with the cardio Nate Diaz has, 
it's going to be a hot uphill battle for him to stay in for five rounds to get to those judges to then hopefully get a decision. Because Nate's not always a guy that will be winning the fight all the time, but he will have spurts where he'll put you on basically the brink of destruction. And we saw that in the first fight, and we saw what happened with Connor. And if he gets put in that place again, I do not see him getting out. So he needs to fight a smart fight, look for his openings, and get in and get out. Because if Connor doesn't fight the the perfect fight, I don't see him winning. Mm-hmm. And to reiterate on that first fight, I mean, you can kind of tell he had he had had so many fights go only one round. That, you know, he hit Diaz with everything he had in that first round. By the fact that he got out of that first round, you could just see it in the second round. Yeah, he got a couple shots in, but he was just not prepared for that fight to go more than one round. So that definitely goes to your point here. The last question I'm going to ask you about this big review. So you buying this? Oh, yeah. I I mean... In all technicality, I'm not I'm not technically buying it. I'm going to a bar real early with uh with a couple friends and making them watch this fight with me. But yeah, I mean if if the bars are packed and I don't want to deal with people, I'm coming home. I'm spending my hard earned cash on this fight. I mean I'm buying it. That's the this fight mm-hmm. we've talked we've been we were talking about this fight before uh, two hundred. And if that explains anything, mm-hmm. we were talking about 200 for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And we took a break from talking about 200 to talk about 202. I mean, it's crazy yep. that this fight's finally here. Uh, it's, you know, it's the fight that should have been on 200, the fight that we wanted on 200. We're getting it now, I think, in a perfect world. It, it's It's great that it's now its own pay-per-view, its its own entity, because it probably would have took a little bit away from the luster of what 200 was of just being this big celebration. It would have been more about Connor and Nate, and I think Connor and Nate didn't need to compete with the UFC as in uh, their name and just kind of have this fight to their own and just be, you know, 202 you know, Nate versus Connor instead of UFC 200 celebration featuring Connor McGregor and Nate Diaz. I mean, I don't think that's what it needed to be. And I think in hindsight, we're getting it probably at a perfect time. Um, I, I'm mm-hmm. very excited for this fight. And this is a fight I would say if you're going to buy one, if you didn't, if you didn't take my advice and buy 200, then take my advice now and buy 202. 